The problem that we experienced in the last section of work with aggregate expenditure model was that we could determine the equilibrium value for output and whether there was excess aggregate expenditure or excess unintended inventory shortfall or unintended inventory accumulation and we could try and work our way to that equilibrium value of GDP. However, it completely ignored the role of prices. In this model, we're going to try and include prices into that analysis in our aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. So first, we're going to have a look at aggregate demand. Have a look at it in terms of price and output. There's output, here's price, and it's going to be downward sloping. This is our aggregate demand curve. This is not the same as a demand curve. This is the demand on aggregate by all the consumers in the economy. And it doesn't have the same reasons for being downward sloping. There is no income and substitution effect in this example. But since it is involved with all the goods in the economy, the substitution effect is relevant because you can't substitute between, the substitution effect between goods is included in this model. Also, the income effect, there has nothing to do with individuals' purchasing power. However, the three effects that determine this downward sloping nature of the aggregate demand curve are the real balances effect that says that as the price increases, the purchasing power of everybody's savings on aggregate will decrease. And since the purchasing power of everybody's savings on aggregate decreases, they're going to demand less output. So as price increases from there to there, demand decreases from there to there for output. So P1 to P2, demand decreases from Y1 to Y2. The second effect is the interest rate effect. If prices were to increase from P1 to P2, then you would need more money to purchase all those goods. If you usually went with a 100 rand note to a store to buy something worth 100 rand, but now it costs 110 rand, you would need that 100 rand note and another 10 rand note. But we're assuming that the money supply is fixed. So when the prices increase, to purchase the same amount of goods, you need more money. But to, the, the money supply is assumed to be fixed in the economy. If the money supply is assumed to be fixed and you need more of it, the demand for money increases, the price of money is going to increase. And the price of money is the interest rate. Now, if the interest rate increases, it's going to decrease investment, which is why we saw there was an inverse relationship between interest rate and investment and that investment demand curve. So if the interest rate increases, investment decreases, and the consumption of durable goods is also going to decrease. So the output that the economy is going to achieve is going to decrease when there is an increase in price because an increase in price with the fixed money supply will lead to an increase in the interest rate which will lead to a decrease in investment and a decrease in consumption so it will decrease GDP. The last effect is the foreign purchases effect. If the price of your home goods increases from P1 to P2, consumers are going to buy more imports and going to buy more of other goods. So if consumers buy more imports and if the prices of your goods increase in other countries as well so that other countries buy less of your exports, your net exports factor is going to decrease. And as you saw from the aggregate expenditures model, when your net export factor decreases, it shifts GDP downwards. GDP decreases. So with an increase in price from the foreign purchases effect, if the price increases in home, people buy more imports. And also if it increases in foreign countries, people buy less of your exports, so your net exports factor decreases and it decreases output. Finally, the determinants of this aggregate demand curve that shifted the demand curve up and down are going to be all your aggregate expenditure variables. There's, there are consumption, investment, government expenditure, and net export. If any of those factors change, if any of them increase, it'll shift your aggregate demand curve upwards or to the right. If any of them decrease, it'll shift it to the left. So consumption, which is made up of wealth effects, expectations, household debt and taxes, which we've gone through, the changes in consumption function, any of those changes will shift your aggregate demand curve either to the right or to the left. Any of the changes in investment are going to shift it to the right or left. Those are factors such as the real interest rate, expectations, technology and taxes, business taxes. We've gone through what shifts the investment demand schedule. Any of those things that shift the investment demand schedule could shift this AD curve either to the right or the left. And then government spending increase will shift it to the right, decrease will shift it to the left. And finally net exports which are affected by the income abroad by a country. If a country overseas has a greater amount of 
income, they're going to purchase more of your exports and it'll shift to the right. However, if your exchange rate depreciates or appreciates, it'll shift to the left. If it depreciates, it'll shift to the right.